I think I might just do one more short one. Although I did have another one picked out too. I don't want you guys to start drooling on me. So, uh, catfishing in the time of COVID. When I was five, I caught a catfish. When I was 50, I was a catfish. <laughs> I toyed with a man named Marty on Facebook, a recent divorcee. Do you remember me? I asked him on Messenger. We used to be friends in fourth grade. You were my first crush. Men always respond to flattery. I was pretending to be a woman named Susan. Usually they go for the younger woman, but sometimes I like a challenge. Susan had somehow kept her figure. She was 60 year old, a 60-year-old widow with, in her fake profile, of course. In real life, she was happily married with three grown boys. I get curious, so I know these things. Susan had a long list of achievements in my version of reality. She was a retired RN and volunteered with Habitat for Humanity. There was a picture of her on a mission trip surrounded by little brown children. A picture with little hearts in the edges. Another of her holding a hammer and building a house. She had memes, so many memes, religious memes, to show what a good person she was. God is good. God is great. God is the answer. You can trust Susan. Do you remember Mrs. Flanagan? Marty pinged me back on Messenger. She was such a great teacher. I loved the sound of a sucker, the sound of a messenger being. Mrs. Flanagan had some good stories, I typed back. Yeah, she did, Marty wrote. I miss the playground, I said. What's your life like now? Well, with the pandemic, it's pretty lonely, to be honest. Wish I was there, I wrote back. Me too, Marty said. Do you know the worst thing about this whole situation? What, I asked. The lack of human contact, he said. I miss it. Me too, I shivered, pulling my blanket up over me as I lay in bed with my laptop, the light glowing on my hands in the dark room with the drawn blackout curtains. I had stopped bothering opening them. My studio apartment had started to feel like a prison. The big bed in the middle floated like an island in the middle of a shrinking sea. With the pandemic, my world was getting smaller every day. We could Zoom, he typed. I get Zoomed out, I wrote back. But I could talk on the phone. I gave Marty a number he could call, and we talked on the phone for hours. Even though he was 10 years older than me, he had a warm, rich voice. Can you fall for your own victim? What if he was another catfish? That seemed unimaginable. There was something honest and kind about him. Now I wondered if I could love him. If I had met him in real life, under normal circumstances, of course. I looked at his pictures and wondered what he smelled like. I looked at the tousled black hair, streaked gray with deep brown eyes. I wondered what it would be like to gaze into them. He had a serious look to him. In a strange way, Marty made my world feel bigger. Do you think we should meet sometime? The idea terrified me, and not just because he'd find me out. It terrified me the way the possibility of love terrifies any sane person. Oh, Marty, I said softly, you know it's not a good idea right now. We live in different cities, travel isn't safe at the moment, and I've been thinking of coming out of my early retirement and helping out at the hospital. I know, he said, I meant one day. One day, yes. The lies spilled out of my mouth so easily, I had a talent for them, and I hated myself for each one I told. I hated myself for each and every one. I knew I had to ask him for money soon. Money, that's what this was about, right? Not my own profound loneliness, not trying to fill it. I found myself looking forward to his calls. We talked every evening for hours. We often talked about mundane things like the weather. I have trouble sleeping, I told him. I wake up in the middle of the night and I can't fall back to sleep. That's pandemic stress for you, he said. I feel that too. In the afternoon, he'd tell me about the clouds above his house or the birds in his yard out in the country. He had books that named them. We never talked about COVID or our supposedly shared hometown. We talked about dreams and what they meant. What's your vision for 2021, he asked, assuming you're vaccinated. I want to travel, I told him. I want to see the world. I want to go to France and write a book out in the countryside. I don't know why I told him the truth that day, but then again, it wasn't the first time. After all these months alone in the dark room, I wondered what it would be like if Marty were there with me in that bed, with his arms around me. What it would feel like to be held, to feel Marty's lips pressed against my hair, his chest against my face. I laughed out loud, a bitter laugh. 
Marty, do you think we will ever find love again? I asked him during one of our calls. We have to have faith, he said. Things will get better, and we have to learn to see the love we already have. I stood up and opened the curtains. I looked out at the street below, with the birds flitting back and forth. How do you tell the difference between a sparrow and a swallow? Is there a difference? I asked him. Does it really matter? He had said. I wondered if there was that much of a difference between Susan and me, a swallow and a sparrow. Of course there was a difference. As he listed off details, I quickly forgot. I realized I had earned enough of his trust and that I had told him too much. Some of the stories were real and mine. I told him about the bicycle accident I'd had when I was nine. I told him about the time I pedaled down a steep, grass-covered hill as fast as I could and hit a hole in the bottom in the ground. I flew through the air, and when I landed, I was completely fine. Until the bike fell on top of me, giving me a bloody nose. I felt kind of like that now. I stopped contacting him for a few days, enough days that he started to worry. Then he sent me a message asking if I was okay. I pray you're all right, he wrote. I lay in bed not eating, not sleeping, shivering, neither ill nor well, wondering, knowing that I was a horrible person, wishing I could call him and tell him how awful I was, confess all my sins. Instead, finally, I sent the message saying that I had gotten into trouble, that I needed money for bail. I asked for a wire transfer. The nice thing about catfishing is you can work from home. It's convenient during a pandemic. The bad thing about it is having to say goodbye and the psychological toll that entails. It's a specific skill set. You've either got it or you don't. I was losing it. I knew it was time for a new career, time for a change. I was surprised when the wire transfer came through. To this day, I don't really understand why he did it. Marty sent 20 grand along with the message. To whoever you are, I sincerely hope you enjoy writing in France. Take care and God bless. Marty. P.S. My fourth grade teacher's name was Mrs. Johnson, not Mrs. Flanagan.